Hi everyone, this is Carolyn with the Cuyahoga Falls Library Makerspace. Welcome to today's Origami Circuit Program. Uh, we'll be talking about some tips and tricks on how to do these projects, as well as what's included in your kit. All right, let's take a look. We have a kit for you here at the library for you to pick up. And so here is an example of our kit. Um, we can open up here. We gave you a couple of things that will help you understand circuits in general, as well as a couple of different options for your paper. So here we have these different parts that you can use. So you want to be careful not to lose any of them. So this first piece is our um, guide from Plix, which is a part of the MIT Media Lab. So they came up with this scene that kind of explains how a circuit works, where you're connecting the light uh, from the positive to the positive side of a battery, and then the negative side of the battery connects to the negative side of the LED. So it talks about like different ways you can light up and how to kind of think about your paper circuit. There's also this kind of troubleshooting tip guide that kind of comes with the kit as well. This is also from the Plix team. We're so thankful for their great resources. And then we also made this kind of anatomy of an LED light. So whenever I'm making, I find that I will end up bending what are called the leads, like these little ends on your LED, the little legs there. But sometimes I find seeing the inside helps me to know which side is positive and which side is negative. So I look for the post for positive or the anvil for negative. So if you ever get stuck or your design or your your little legs snap off, you can still know what side is positive and what side is negative. And I'll show you why that is important. So we have our battery here, and this is just a regular little coin cell battery. And when we're ready, we wanna hold it by the edges. When we're ready to do the uh, circuit part of our project, you can test your light, and I've tested all of your kits and so your light should light up just fine. So you can always test it by seeing if your battery is okay or if your light's okay just by attaching, like running the um, negative and the positive and matching it to the sides on your battery. So we have a fancy color changing LED. Now when you're making your project, I find that I end up folding my origami first and then I think of where I want my battery to go. Like here I have the the two sides of my LED and then I put this copper tape which helps conduct the electricity. So we have copper tape and if you want, if you have like a glue stick, I also included some aluminum foil. So if you don't have enough copper tape, you can also use aluminum foil. So I think this guy, yeah, I wrapped it around so that when you squeeze him, he lights up. So you want to think about where your battery is going to go uh, and how it's going to work. So some of these other ones are really simple, like our flower. I just kind of created my flower and then stuck the LED through to the back so I can set it up that way. And I did the same thing for my little heart here. You're kind of sticking it through and then you can attach it to something else, put it on a box. Um, some of them, like my dragon here, I really folded the metal on the inside. 
so you can kind of see where I have it tucked inside. And it wraps around so that when his head's like that, I pinch it and he lights up. So I put the LED in there. So one other tip that I wanted to give you was that if you have a part that is going to be folded over and the sides might touch, you will want to have something in between um, where the copper tape is. Because if the copper tape or aluminum foil touches before it gets to your light, uh, it will not work because electricity is really lazy and so it'll take the shortest path. So if it's touching here, it, it just will skip your light altogether. So that's another big kind of troubleshooting tip that you can do. Um, like you can see on the frog, I made sure to put them on opposite sides and made sure that in here they're not touching as well. So that way you have it only touching on the side it's supposed to touch. That's the electric um, kind of paper circuit portion. The other thing that I like to do is that um, origami paper is really square. So I tend to find computer paper really fun so that I can color on it and do different things like our, our little frog here. So we have a couple of different colors of paper that come in the kit. And to make it square, I will fold it so this edge meets on a diagonal. And then I cut off this other part. So that's what gives me a nice um, square to work with. And to kind of keep going with my designs, or maybe to make something smaller, I'll even do that out of these ends. There was one time I made a project smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller uh, to see just how small I could make them. So that's how I did the paper flower and things that were a lot smaller by using these other pieces of paper. And if you run into a design where it doesn't have this diagonal fold, um, which most of them do, I will take the same size paper and I'll lay it across the piece I'm wanting to cut. So I'll just draw a line here and then cut along that line so that I know that it is all completely square because they're the same size pieces of paper. So those are my tips for working with your origami project. Um, you can follow any of the different links that you find online included in the email with this project. I have um, different origami designs that I like to follow. Um, but I would love to see what kinds of ideas and creations that you can come up with. All right. Happy making.